Good morning, colleagues. Uh, I'm coming to you at the end of what has been a deeply emotional week for uh, so much of America. Uh, we've all watched across the country and watched in our televisions and viewed our social media threads. Well, we've seen that the United States has literally erupted over the killing of uh, George Floyd in Minneapolis. And while there are many perspectives about uh, how one begins to address the healing that has to occur in this country, I think most of us would agree that the loss of his life has been a searing moment for us, not only in his brutality, but for the number of times that we've seen this type of image portrayed over and over again. Uh, this moment, and I will tell you, uh, in a lot of ways feels very different. Um, I think context is everything. And as I watch and I look at how our country is responding to this, uh, I believe each of us has been changed by this one way or the other. Uh, coming as it does in the wake of the pandemic, one can't help but think of the ways in which these issues are so related. Uh, we think about the fact that we have a pandemic that is disproportionately affecting people of color. And we also know that it highlights the longstanding inequalities that we see in our country and certainly in our healthcare system. And I said this several times this week, and I won't get tired of saying it, the disruption that we've seen in the streets uh, can be unsettling. One knows that. But when the status quo is unjust and unjust, disruption in my mind is almost inevitable. So one of the greatest things about our college is that we intentionally create spaces to talk about these things, to process them in ways that I think is one of the true joys of being a member of an academic community. Uh, our focus on radical inclusion and opportunity and access gives us an opportunity that we can really think about these things in very deliberate ways. Um, this has not stopped us from standing up and having difficult conversations and recognizing that there are multiple perspectives in an organization, certainly on the political spectrum, but even also in how we interpret and view the experiences that we're seeing. I'm hopeful that each of you has been inspired by this week's activities that you've seen and think about the peaceful protest that has occurred and the phenomenal conversations that are taking place in our academic organization, but certainly within your homes and hopefully within the relationships that you enjoy outside of Montgomery College. I've already witnessed that this week in the dialogues that have taken place, which have drawn in hundreds of allies as we've seen across the organization. And I'm grateful for the faculty expertise. That's the beautiful part about working in an organization like this, where you have people with deep knowledge, background, and skills on these topics that have really shaped the way that we've had these conversations within our organization. Uh, in U.S. history, in criminal justice, and psychology, uh, these faculty have lent their experience and insights in ways to help us give context and meaning, and dare I say depth, around these subjects in ways that would not exist if we were not in an academic organization. And I hope that these things will continue. Uh, I've heard a calling out for this, a cry, a desire for more of these spaces. And even though we are working in a remote environment, uh, I'm so pleased with how we are using our technology in ways to advance conversations that are so needed. And more importantly, I'm hopeful that we'll be thinking about solutions that can change the way we experience this world and perhaps prevent these types of uh, scenarios from happening again in the future. Now, as I do on most Fridays, I wanna share with you some of the feedback that I've received from the college community this week, in particular to the statement that I sent out on Monday about George Floyd's killing, and more importantly, of the ways in which people are responding to that statement. I was reminded that there are multiple perspectives in an organization like ours, and we want to create, I think, safe space for different discourse to occur, for different political perspectives, for different opportunities to exist in an organization like ours. So I thank those of you who offer perspectives that differ, that differ than my own. I learned from that. It gave me an opportunity to respond. But at the same time, though, it affirmed for me uh, the joy of working in an environment with smart people who think deeply. So I thank you for that. I also received an abundance of feedback uh, from members of the college community who really appreciated the opportunity 
uh, to hear my thoughts in this way. And I'll share some of them with you. For one person, simply, my heart is broken. From another, black lives do matter. Equity and inclusion matter. From a mother, and she said, as a mother of two children, this is real, terrifying, and soulfully painful. So many of us are trying to make sense of the senseless. We have to look more deeply for peace, more closely for love, and more broadly for opportunities to hear and to turn our world around for our babies. That is the deep simplicity of it all. It is the only way. From a faculty member who shared with me, as an African-American male, I am beyond furious. But more importantly, I want our students to feel safe and to be able to express how they feel. With the COVID-19 situation, and as stressful as that has been, and the murder of a defenseless African-American, I am really worried about the psyche of our young people. I'm wondering, is there any more MC can do to be an ally or to raise more awareness of the injustice that has taken place for years? And for one staff member, I received this message. Thank you with all of my heart for giving us courage to continue our work. These messages I received this week were emotional, they were angry, they were bitter, they were pained, they were hurt. And as Toni Morrison once wrote, quote, in times of dread, artists must never choose to remain silent. So I'm honored to receive the feedback where people are naming their pain. We may not be artists in the traditional sense, but we're all humans in an experience that is unlike probably what many of us can remember in this lifetime, uh, because that means that we're engaged. That means that we're listening. That means that we're trying to allow for personal and maybe hopefully public transformation. Uh, it creates space for change and even for hope. Uh, like these protest moments that we've seen this week, the ones that are peaceful, have allowed us to really have moments of deep introspection when done very well. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to serve an organization like Montgomery College with some of the most courageous and passionate people that I have ever come across. Uh, you give me strength to do my work as the president of this glorious institution. And I am blessed to have allies in very profound work of building more just communities, uh, communities that are understanding that action and scholarship have the opportunity to really change the way we experience it. I thank you all for what you do, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care and be well.